Good morning. Well, it's day two, and the sun is shining outside. It's a lovely day, and uh, we're about to go into. Uh, well, we're about to have a little scout around. In fact, um, because uh, frankly, we've uh, never been here before, so this is going to be a little bit of a, a nose around. Plus, we have an old Verizon Wi-Fi device that we bought last year. Year before. Year before. And uh, basically, we're going to go and go and see if. When when Dave and Mel were with us. That's right. Two years ago, then not not one year. And yes, yeah, so we need to see if it can be reactivated, and sure the nice people can do something for us. And you know, just gonna take it easy and um, maybe have a a light breakfast because, admittedly, they're both still quite full actually. <laughs> After that ridiculously heavy Wendy's burger last night. What was it called? The Baconator. The Baconator! Maybe I should have got the smaller one called Son of Baconator. I think you should have. Hmm. Uh, I would have been wiser. But, oh, they wanted to supersize me as well. What size would you like? No! No. When you supersize here. Well, that, that wasn't supersized. That, was, uh, uh, that was a medium or regular size drink meal. But the drink was, and the drink was... That was a regular drink. It was that big. Yeah, but this, this, the large one is, is huge, even huger than that. Scary huge, actually. Um, although they do do root beer on tap. Not, not on tap. <laughs> root beer from a machine, but it's still nice, just the same. And really, nowhere else in the world does root... Well, no, that's... that's Australia has root beer. Yes. Don't lie, Darren. <laughs> Other places do as well. But what I mean is, you can't get root beer like that in the UK. You, you can get Unless it. Unless you have Soda Stream. They're yeah. full of lies. Yeah. Soda Stream mix. To be fair, you can. But there you go. Anyway, I'm just trying to do my shoes up with one hand. It's not being very successful. So the guys at Verizon sorted out our my five without any trouble at all. We've got. To coverage again which means we can upload a bit more quickly and uh, now we're off to find Walmart wherever that may be and uh, down there behind me then further towards Washington is where we are Washington and um, yes get a bit David did tell me everything was there so there you are Rocks. Well, a little snack in the car. Um, true move. Eat one each. And some whoopee cakes, I think they're called. They look dangerous. <laughs> However, and as it turns out, Walmart was just one block down the road. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. We go to get uh, some food and uh, actually a cool box as well. Original. That's our big So we've come back from our trip to Walmart. We have everything we could possibly want. Absolutely loads of bags. <laughs> They're really very good. I mean, they pack your bags for you. And, uh, but they, they, they're really careful about what they put in what bag. And the guy who helped us in Fantastic, it was the, the attention to detail of putting what you put in each bag was just really lovely. Uh, and, you know, and so we got everything we wanted and I did this with my hand for no apparent reason and then we got back here. And I have to say, you know, first impressions of St George and Washington, the city next to it, it's a really nice place. It's got a really sort of, um, well, to me, it feels very laid back and sort of quite chilled. Um, but of course, you know, with all this lovely warm desert heat, what else would you be but chilled and relaxed? Not to mention, of course, the rather lovely surroundings. That is a really good view. 
to be fair, from any balcony to have in the morning or at any time of the day. Well, lunchtime, and uh, we've found it. Well, found a place called Tom's Sandwiches. Tom's Deli. Tom's Deli Sandwiches, which, according to various things I've seen on the internet, is supposed to do really good sandwiches. So, I guess the only way to tell is to try them. <laughs> so, let us go in and see. So we went this afternoon to a place called Pioneer Park, which is located on the edge of St George, um, but effectively still in the city, and uh, turned out to be quite a special place. And you get to it by driving up this quite fantastic road that, that's a bit sort of roller coaster like, and it you know, goes through all of this kind of Joshua tree, sagebrush type of, uh, of um, well, cliffs, basically, is precisely what they are. And um, so, first of all, the drive there was something quite special. And then when we actually get there, you're faced with big, tall sandstone cliffs that have been eroded by the weather and by the wind and by time into the most fantastic shapes and you, you know they sort of they stick out and you can see layers in them it's, it's very artistic actually it's as though someone sort of out with a, a very big hand <laughs> modeled them out of clay and put little holes in them here and there full of little hiding places where little critters can go hide from the midday sun now it's not just that it looks pretty, but uh, because it's quite high up, as we discovered, the view over the city and effectively the valley below is quite stunning <laughs> um, and panoramic, in actual fact. Um, you know, you, you can see how the whole city, uh, when you see it before you, is it, kind of dominated by the Mormon tabernacle in the middle. It's just a really big, striking white building, and everything else is quite low. Uh, and all punctuated by trees, it's a uh, you know, sort of place. You, you know, if I could paint, <laughs> which I can't really, um, you know, I could quite happily produce a big, like wall-sized painting of it because it'd be quite, um, quite nice. But as it is, we photograph it instead because it's a bit quicker. Um, so yeah, one particular rocky outcrop, uh, for want of a better word for it, uh, I went up to the top of, and uh, Dave's bottom. And uh, this is the view we got of me waving from the top of this outcrop with a fantastic view. Then we went in a bit more into the park, and it's not, well, I suppose it's not what you'd typically call a park or a garden. It's its primarily composed of sort of very sh steep cliffs and valleys and things, and I guess quite good if you enjoy climbing or scrambling as we did. Uh, we, we came across this hidden valley, I'll call it, uh, where you, know, you could hear nothing except the occasional breeze of wind. And there was nothing else there, literally no one else there. Probably lots of animals were, were sort of there, but we just didn't see any. Although, I have to say, we did see prairie dogs, two of them, I think, in the end. Um, they were very furtive and very quick, but um, their presence was confirmed by the presence of uh, prairie dog droppings, to put it politely, as we were descending the cliff again to go back to the car. So, I have to say, rather a nice, and, a nice little...
surprise that was. Uh, baking hot though, uh, you know, we couldn't spend too long there, so I didn't have any sun cream on, so we had to come back and, um, and go to Walgreens and, and basically sort that out. And having sat inside for a bit and cooled off, feel a bit less kind of uh, flustered by it and take very long to be honest. Um, but uh, so there you go, Pioneer Park. Well, that's day two. Um, the, Thank you very much for watching. We're back in tomorrow with more exploits from sunny Utah. So until then, bye-bye.